sunrise in my eyes Just like a new day A breath of fresh air in my life What's up guys? What's growing on? So we're in Asheville, North Carolina Little man sleeping Wife's getting ready and I'm heading over to make some coffee and we're hanging out with the Rhodes family this week. We're doing farm chores, maybe kind of a vacation, more of a workcation. We're here to have fun, work, help around the farm, kind of be a part of the daily routine. I'm heading over to make some coffee. I'm going to show you guys around. Let's go see Justin. Hold tight. There's that bus. I know you guys remember when that bus was in our yard. That thing traveled the entire country. Yeah, so another thing it's been since we've been here is wet. It's been raining every day. We bought those uh, Florida showers with us to kind of share them with Justin a little bit. Not like they didn't need it. Kind of feel like we're in the rainforest here in North Carolina. Oh, hey, hey. Y'all know it's that guy from YouTube? Look at this. Good morning, sunshine. Okay. We're the only ones. kind of blown out with the light behind you, but all right, I'm coming in. We're the only ones working right now, Pete? Yeah, you know how we do. I gotta clean the, the rain off my screen. Oh, he's got the rig ready to go. Woo! Alright, it's bulletproof time. Hey, good morning. Morning. I tried to sneak out. What are you doing? Um, I was coming to do some chores. You had your alarm on or what? No. Did you hear me sneaking out? No. I looked at my, I had woke up and I, I looked at my clock and it, and it said nine and I'm like. And I got my clothes on and came running out. All right, you ready to help these guys? Mm -hmm. Let's get to it. All right, I guess if I want to show you guys what's going on around here, I got to get out here in the rain. It's been brutal. It's been raining like every day. You hear these kids down here? They're getting crazy with it. We just got done making a little bit of our uh, special blend coffee here. Got my Great American Farm Tour cup and uh, I'm gonna show you guys what's growing on. Let's go check this place out. Oh, good morning. Good morning. How you doing, Sunshine? Doing good, doing good. Went and put the cats out. We, we got the thing, their enclosure better. They're safe? Yeah. All right, what are we planting today? I don't know. We were planting something every day. I know you got something planned. I don't know, whatever Justin says. Right, we have to check the list. <laughs> so you guys ready to see what kind of chores get done on a real working farm? Since Justin got back from the bus tour, they've integrated a lot of animals, a lot of different stuff here on the farm. Let's check it out. Boys are all out here working. Look, Mr. Rhodes is over there doing work. What you this morning? Am I in the vlog? Hey. hey, what's that you got you're in your in hand vlog. there? I think you're gonna make my vlog. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. You're gonna make the cut. I'm gonna be a star. Hey. You'll make me famous. <laughs> So I believe these are layers right here. And up over here they have broilers. All right, if you guys look over here, you'll see some sheep. And Justin had mentioned that's probably the easiest animal he's ever raised. Um, very low maintenance. They don't need feed. They just eat grass. Um, you know, they're definitely a little easier to take care of than the chickens. Even has some pigs over there on the backside and a couple of cows. So lots of animal integration going on here. Annual gardens. And we're going to help them with that food forest. We're going to get some agroforestry going on here in North Carolina. So hold on. You guys can hear that, but we are approaching one of my favorite features on the property. And that prop, you know, that feature is this, this creek, the water rushing by, that sound, that noise. We heard that when we first got here. I thought it was like rain or wind in the distance. He said, no, that's a creek in my backyard. You know, this is what they drink off of, this source of water that's coming from the headwaters up at the top. 
That's what their well's tied into. That's where that good stuff comes from I was talking about. So that huge hill you guys see over here in the distance, that's actually a big dam for a beautiful lake that it's the property right next to Justin. They actually built that lake and the dam and we actually swam there the other day. Justin's in with those people so we went out to the lake, checked it out a little bit. There's like a huge hundred and something foot waterfall on the property. Quite beautiful. So those are kind of like those headwaters before it gets over here. There it goes. So. Justin has a dairy cow, a bull, and a calf. So there's a couple of larger animals here and uh, he's fixing to milk the dairy cow this morning, kind of part of that daily routine. And he has to separate her from the bull and get her over there to milk. So this can be the fun part. Okay, dance. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Ooh. He likes to run down the lane now. Make me hurt him back. Then I can grab out. It's his new technique, huh? Yeah, he's on to it. He's gonna try to hurt her out. Hold on. Morning, Violet. Hey, girl. Stay back. Don't you get any ideas, big guy? Hey, you weren't invited to the party. Good morning. Hey. When the big guy goes, you get out of his way. I had weights to my workout this morning. What are you doing, dude? Excited to see the camera this morning. Good morning. Barney brushed her off. We're gonna do one soap rag, especially because it's wet today. We're gonna do two soap rags and then a dry rag. So this isn't your first run in with dairy cows. You grew up with right? I grew up with meat cows. I've been doing dairy cows for about three years now. Okay. So you just took a break for the tour? Took a break for the tour. Okay. So the cows, ended up buying some more when we got back. So this is just getting back on the normal routine, huh? Yeah. All right. It's a great way to wake up. Come out here. It's an easy, monotonous task. I usually listen to the, some motivational speech or something like that. Get pumped nice. up. Kill two birds with one stone. Hey, a little Gary listen Vee to while you're pumping, huh? You could listen to an audio book. You could listen to a podcast. I like uh, Zig Ziglar. Nice. Uh, for overall life motivational stuff. It's a good way to start today. Look at me, you're turning blue! What are you doing? 
All right, these kids out here are definitely living the life. Swimming in rivers, playing in the dirt, running around barefoot. I don't think it gets much better than that. What kind of chores happen at the Rhodes house? Um, so first, um, we always feed these sea monsters. And why do you call them the sea monsters? I don't know, it's Justin made it up. Justin made it up. All right, so tell everybody who don't know who the sea monsters are, what they are. They actually are chickens. Chickens? And there's one in there except that's not a chicken. His name is Pooper, he's a duck. Okay, what and does he do? Does he protect the chickens? He just walks around, we pick them up sometimes. All right, so we, we've done the sea monsters, what's next? Um, usually there's two things in next, but there's each period, so what Josh Size does, is he does the pigs and he gives them scrap. Really? And then Jonah moves the electric fence from the goats. Oh. I'm not the goats, the sheep. All right, so we're doing chores? Yeah. Is it chores? What are we ready? going first? Sea it's monsters? Probably. That's oh no. Are ready for this? Wait, the sea monster's there over there. The sea monster's there. All right. All right, so okay. it's time to do work. Okay, let's go. All right. I think Mr. Brown's even coming. I'm, oh, I'm ready. I'm going to do my pigs. Okay. Are you going to do the pigs? See? He does the scrap. Oh, he feeds them the scraps. You want to get the scrap? What do you think about this farm stuff? Does it make you strong? All right, so I actually started to make you guys this video yesterday, but it was raining about 10 times harder. I couldn't even do it with the umbrella. As you can see, I got a different shirt on, so I have to finish this. And let me tell you, these guys are some dedicated farmers. I think they changed outfits like three times yesterday, just totally soaking wet, came back out doing the chores, moving the animals. I mean, rain or shine, farming's work, so. Oh. What do you got there? A goose. Look at his wing. Why do you got a goose? Protect them. He's a protector? Yep. He's your guard dog? Yep. Oh. Man, rain or shine, you guys are out here getting after it, huh? Yeah, uh, everybody's still gotta eat, buddy. Woo! And it's been and it's been raining for five days. So what are you gonna do? You can't stop. How are these chargers doing? Are they holding up? You know what? I don't know, Jonah, you got a tester on ya? Oh, you wanna try it, Pete? Oh! <laughs> it's got a little buzz. buzz. It seems like it's still holding them in, so it's still going. I'm going to soak more feed. We got our dry feed, 100 pounds of dry feed right here. And, um, we put it in these food grade buckets about halfway up and then we soak it the rest. And that, that uh, breakdowns the anti-nutrients and makes it 15% more digestible, edible, 15% more off your feed bill. Nice. Just by adding water overnight. Giving us some pro tips, are you? You pro tips. All right. So what's, what's going on with the goose you got in here? Give us the pro tip the there. The goose is growing up so that he's bonding with these little chicks and then as he grows up, he's a guard goose. So he'll flap his wings, he'll squawk, he'll look up in the air, he'll protect them from any aerial predators and side predators. And he eats grass, he eats what they're eating, see? Nice. Uh, totally easy. You know, unlike, uh, unlike a guard dog, he's a lot of protein, expensive feed, a lot of feed, those goose can live off the land. Hey, so what's with the air traffic controller here, on, give me on the end? Why are my dad's pockets? Hey, you know what? That's our scarecrow. Oh, really? Until that goose grows up big enough to guard these guys. Okay. It's worked. Huh? Or this rain has worked. The crows don't like the rain. All right. 
What are you doing over here now? Well, these are my regular chickens. They're growing up to be normal birds. One more guard goose for them. We got Icelandics in here. We got a mix of just a barnyard flock for the beautiful one, just a different kind of variety. It's just gonna be a beautiful flock. We've got to protect them from aerial predators. We had this pin, so we just put them in that. Nice. Until they're old enough. Yeah, so if my audio sucks, my options were limited. It's literally rained every single day I've been here. I thought we had a window of opportunity to get out here, but it's relentless. setting up for over here? I'm getting ready to move the cows over here. See that grass? That's a pretty long way from where they are now, yes, huh? Yes, it's pretty much across the farm. Whoa! Let me get the... Look, we lack, what, two, three feet right there? How many times have you moved them like this? Uh, this, this is the third time here. Third time here? This summer. Whoa! And actually, it's too far ahead of me. Really? I'm having to go behind them now to mow. And then we're having to go back to where we started before we even hit it all because it's growing so fast. So what does this mean? You need more cows? Well, then you have the problem you get more cows, but then grass slows down in the summer and really slows down in the fall. Yeah. So if I mow behind them though, it improves the quality of the grass. Less weeds come back. A dentist at Full Circle Farm says you got to think of it as fertilization. It just adds organic matter to the soil. Nice. The roots you get recharged. So is this just getting set up for the next time you move the sheep, or this is to no. hold the cows out of this area? This is to get the fence hot for the sheep and to hold the cows out of this area. I don't want the cows to come past this point because the kids are so much in here. I'm gonna keep the cow and the bull over here. So this has been our view every morning waking up and every evening going to sleep. And I think it's actually more enjoyable at night to be honest with you. The fireflies here are like the most amazing display of fireworks I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it seems like every six inches there's a firefly at night. The whole sky was lit up. Pretty amazing, pretty epic to wake up to. Something I wanted to point out to y'all was being here with Justin and Rebecca. It really gave me a whole new respect for this style of farming. I mean, this is work. Um, you know, they're, they're getting after it. They're constantly out here, rain or shine, like I said. I mean, getting soaked, taking care of the animals, doing their chores. It's nonstop over here. These guys don't quit. They're tough. Hold tight. Something else I want to point out while we're here, water. Um, we all know water is life. And something I want to say, especially about this site, the water it's probably some of the best water I've ever had in my life. I mean, literally, I'm gonna fill all my bottles. I got my you know, stainless steel bottles in the truck we came here with, and uh, I'm gonna be bottling some of this stuff up and taking it home. I'm gonna miss it. The water was something else. This is that zone one veggie garden. We put a little trench in here yesterday to see if it would help with the water issue. You know, this is um, potentially like a 100 year rain event, not very common, and you know, mulch, is usually the solution you know constantly preaching mulch well i don't have a lot of experience with mulch up here on these clay based soils and something i'll point out like you know it's actually retaining too much moisture they put about a foot of mulch over here in the veggie garden and the tomatoes were underwater eggplants were underwater so put a trench in the garden too just trying to get that water out of there you know this is kind of like like i said maybe like one of those 100 year rain events not very common but it is wet here it's non-stop Hey, 
see, what is this? Like a zone one garden you got growing here? This is, a, well, we call this a crop garden still. So this has got, we got potatoes, some beets and carrots amongst the weeds. We have an experiment going. So the far, we did a mulch. We planted the potatoes and then mulched it really heavily. And then we did the next one and we're hoeing in between those potatoes. And then the next one, we have cover crop growing. Nice. So, you know, we'll see what happens and see what the yield is. And then we've got weeds and carrots and beets in this next one. Then this is broccoli and cabbage and collards in like these right here. And we got some beets growing over there. And this all has cover crop in it. And then Jonah planted corn. And we planted some squash in there too. And some watermelons. We've got an experiment going over there where we just dug a hole in the sod and then like really heavily mulched around it. See if we can just get away with hey. it. See what we can get away with. Might get a freak of nature out of that That's one, huh? That's right. Why not, you know? I mean, it's like spaghetti squash, I think. They're like crazy. They grow like just great. So this is kind of like the extension of the zone one or this is the secondary zone one garden? I think you guys got two gardens going by the house. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, well, and actually all of our crop gardens are like right here in zone one. Okay. Even though they're more like, like this one down here, we're not going to go, hopefully, the intention is to not go back until harvest. Um, I can't ever help myself. I have to go down there and check it and like see what's growing and all that. But um, kind of all of our gardens are really in zone one. We don't really do anything too far out. I don't know, it's, it's nice to show people how much they can grow in a little amount of space. I mean, we do have quite a bit of space here. <laughs> we got some room, yeah. But, you know, I mean, just in like, you know, the kitchen garden, look how much we're going to actually produce, you know? It's going to be quite a bit. You're rocking it. Yeah, man. Thank well, you for having us. Justin's rocking it. Thank you. Keep up the hard work, You're Rebecca. You're welcome. Come back. We're when, back. Come back when it's not pouring down rain every day. <laughs> That would be fun. I did hope. So there's no guarantee this goes as planned. We just hope, huh? We do. You never know. Animals, let alone one with 1,900 pounds and Woo! two horns. Hey! He is! Wow, we're getting jumping. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Violet. Let's go. Show the way. Hey, you go to the gym? This is like the drag weight feature at the gym. This is like one of those cool workout, like the CrossFit rugged, yeah. pull something crazy you workout. You can invent your, invent your own uh, <laughs> mud endeavor over here, huh? Yeah. Farm endeavor through the mud. That's the cows right there, Pete. I see towels wagging. Whoa! Happy cows. All right. Now we go get their water. Is that what's next? <laughs> oh. yeah, I guess this is the cool down workout. Oh! I have been a small area, Pete. It's kind of hard to see with your camera, but you see these strands of electric? It's probably about 50 feet, 50 square feet. Is that what it? No, no. 50 by 50, whatever that comes to. And then, yeah. there you go. Probably a little hair more. No, it's more than 500 square feet, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like closer to maybe 800,000. Okay, let's say that. Okay, so they're in about 800 to 1,000 square feet. You got just these single strands of electric, and I'm forcing them to eat this down. There's a lot of grass in here. I look at it as like, how many hay bales this would get me? I've been putting up hay all my life, and then one cow eats one hay bale. This is more than two hay bales, so I give them a little bit more. The next day, tomorrow, all we gotta do is move up the cross fence to let them into another similar area. I'll look and say, did I feed them enough? If I did, I make it about the same size. Did I feed them too much or too little? I adjust the size of the next paddock based on how much they ate before. 
and might even come out here in the morning if they've already eaten it down. I can move them. You can move them twice a day, three times a day. Greg usually moves them four times a day. And you can just move the cross fence and they can come back for this water. You don't have to move your water, but every fourth day, because this grass, what happens here is it doesn't start growing back until that fourth day. And if they hit it on that fourth, fifth, sixth day, it's so damaging. It's like a baby. Like they come back and hit this baby grass and it damages it, kills it, retards it and it struggles and the weeds thrive but here in this system they mow down the great stuff the ice cream and we give it a break that after that fourth day they can't even come back we move, we move our water we move down the lane and move up another strip so they're just like big kids eating candy out here huh if you let a cow roam this whole field they'll go eat all what you call the candy and they'll go back and hit the candy and all these weeds are growing back and they'll go back and hit that candy again and in, and, and in a year, you've doubled your weeds and halved your candy. So you gotta give that candy a rest. And actually, if you mow it, candy tends to grow faster than the weeds. So if you mow it with these cows and do that year after year and move them every, at least once a day, your fields are just gonna get better and better. More of the premium stuff, less the weeds. And they won't, they won't eat the weeds, but they'll walk on them and trample them, especially if you put them in a small area like this. Another pro tip on some mob grazing there with Justin <laughs> Rhodes. Hey! Whoa, did I hear you say we're done? We're done. <laughs> we're, I should say we're done for today. Done for today. So what <laughs> all got done? What's done. the nightly routine? Even tonight, the, the, the boys have to, and I'll have to come out. We'll have to put the poultry pen down so the predators don't get in. I know just I will put up the chickens. So. Oh, so this is just chore number really one done. after dinner. <laughs> we still got chore round number two? Yep. Wow. Hey, we make work our favorite around here. <laughs> you got a couple of different sets of chickens here, right? <laughs> yes. You want to see them? Yeah. So tell okay, us what, what's the, growing on. This is where the chickens were. Okay. This is exciting now. The, these 17 chickens were right here long enough. They had one compost pile. We protected the compost pile for the first week, let it get heated, we put it in pallets, and then took it off. The chickens helped us turn it. We turned it a few times, and then the chickens helped to spread it. And look how well they tilled it. The chickens did the job. The animals do the job of the farm. Then we moved the chickens out. And we, we at the same time that the chickens were working in here, we had seeds growing in our greenhouse in soil blocks and they were about this big the plants and we planted them in there you can see them right there so they had a head start of any weeds that might come back so we planted those plants they are squash they're pumpkin things like that cucumbers watermelon and we planted them what i like to call mulch bombs us we had our dishwasher broke so we've been using compostable plates turn a problem into a solution we put those plates around the we put four plates around each plant and then put some wood chips over two three inches and we have mulch bombs to protect the plant from any weeds or in our case cover crop because what do we do with the rest of the area we don't want we, nature is modest she covers herself and in North Carolina with all this rain and sunshine she covers herself quickly and she doesn't dress very pretty we like to dress her we dress her in cover edible cover beautiful cover crops be attracting cover crops and you can see them coming up. I thought those were okay. weeds. So that's those are not crop. weeds, nice. especially those sh thin shoots. That's probably rye. And you see some red clover in there. And that cover crop helps build and restore the soil, Has all, adds all kinds of beneficial stuff to it. And it, cover crops are a lot easier to mow and till down than weeds say. So these crops grow, we planted them. It was a little harder than like if you till and put something in. So it's a little more labor intensive, three or four hours to 1,200 square foot area. And we come back and, and then that's it. We plant and we leave. We come back at harvest. We get what we want. And by that time, the chickens have already had done their next job, next job, and have come back. 120 days after we planted in here when those pumpkins are ready. And those, those chickens come in after we're done. They, they till and mow it down and get our leftover produce. They eat the cover crops and they prep it again for another round.
chickens were there. You just saw that, that chicken system. This is their it at the beginning. Look, I, I wish you could have seen this before. Well, basically, you, you see that. It was basically like this. And that's not even been a week, I don't think. Have they been in there a week, Rebecca? We put the cow in there for a half a day. She came in, mowed it down so they can get at it. And it's gonna take them no time to, to get at this. These are the layers. Yeah, and, and so they're tealing, fertilizing with their manure and laying us eggs. Guys, Justin and Rebecca were gracious enough to have us here for more than three days. We broke, <laughs> we broke the three day rule a little bit You're here, brother. You're welcome anytime, man. This is a workaholic right here. We'll take those any day. <laughs> well, we've been uh, blessed with rain, but a little bit too much rain on this trip. But we made the best of it. It's been a blast. I think we've been having a pretty good time. Yeah. Overall, it's been good. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Yeah. Don't forget, well, I'll put Justin's links in the description down below, but like, subscribe share and what do we do Justin pound dirt <laughs>